what Lehman did, and we don't need to talk about Lehman specifically, what they did, moving assets around at the end of the quarter, is called window dressing. It's legal. Financial firms have done it for decades. Uh, now the SEC and the Financial Crisis Inquiry Commission are investigating it. Should it be forbidden? Well, I think every organization, both financial firms and others, manage their balance sheet. Uh, and I don't think managing the balance sheet by itself is window dressing. Uh, I think that what is important is to make sure that the investors have a proper view of, of the leverage of an organization and other things. Um, the repo transactions at Lehman, um, which again, the accounting for them wasn't challenged, um, would have changed the leverage from something like 31 times to 32 times. Lehman was and would have remained the third highest leveraged bank. And so I think at the end of the day, you're seeing a, as part of the de-risking you've talked about, you're seeing deleveraging. You're also seeing enhanced disclosures that the SEC and others have subsequently required firms to make about the, uh, the, the way balance sheets are, are dealt with. Yeah. Leaving Lehman specifically sure. out of this, to what extent is it the auditor's responsibility to make clear to the outside world what, as you say, the real situation of an organization is? Well, I think the, we have a proactive responsibility to make sure we obviously comply with auditing standards and that the clients we serve are complying with the requisite accounting standards. It's curious, by the way, that on some of these issues of the balance sheets you're talking about, international financial reporting standards result in a different outcome than U.S. GAAP. And so I think the, the first and most important responsibility is to actually act diligently and professionally in compliance with standards and have the clients do the same. Where the application of those standards would result in something that is not in European parlance true and fair, I think we then you know, ought to figure out how to discuss this with regulators, discuss this in a more open way with audit committees, and figure out then the next steps to take. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this raises... It's, it's one, one, one point on that. Yeah. What you're seeing today, Jeff, is the regulator community wanting to figure out how and whether the auditor should work more closely with prudential supervisors. The FRC and FSA in the UK put out a white paper talking specifically about that. What role should auditors who serve financial institutions have in talking to the equivalent of the Fed, the OCC, and the bank regulators? That's something that's going to take place over the next year in discussion. Yeah. Uh, would it be fair to say that the crisis was caused in part or contributed to by some financial firms doing misleading things that were within the rules? You know, I don't know that it would be fair to say they're doing misleading things. I actually think that at the end of the day, there were a lot of, in hindsight, really poor business decisions that came home to roost. In, in the first instance, it's making loans, largely on real estate, that you know, were not properly underwritten and no diligence was done on, on the borrower with an unrealistic expectation that real estate values would always be steadily going up and it didn't really matter if the borrower could pay back because the collateral value would keep the bank whole. I wouldn't characterize that as misleading. I'd characterize that as a bad business decision when the circumstances change as dramatically. You know, just as many organizations made the bad business decision of buying into, they weren't making the loans, but buying into the securitized and derivative assets off of those loans. And so I think that's really what we've seen.